Today is Monday, November 27th. We'll update you about the situation in Gaza, including how many hostages have been freed and what comes next as a ceasefire enters what could be its final day. Also, wintry weather has been impacting millions of Americans and holiday travelers. Plus, why one of Taylor Swift's Eras tour shows is under investigation now. Which movie surprisingly won the top spot at the holiday weekend box office? And what's expected on this Cyber Monday? Those stories and much more news to know today, coming up. Welcome, welcome to The Newsworthy. All the day's news in around 10 minutes. Fast, fair, fun, and on the go. I'm Erica Mandy. Thanks so much for being here. You ready? Let's do this. Well, the world is still witnessing a big spike in both anti-Semitism and Islamophobia that started rising when the latest war erupted in the Middle East. Just this past weekend, three college students of Palestinian descent were shot in Vermont. And investigators say it may have been a hate crime. Police say a gunman shot them on the street near the University of Vermont without saying a word, then ran away. Well, they arrested a suspect just last night near the scene of the shooting, and he's expected in court today. All three of the 20-year-olds who were shot are seriously hurt and are now being cared for in the hospital. The ceasefire deal seems to be holding in Gaza and families are being reunited. You'll remember Israel and Hamas agreed to hold off on fighting for at least four days while Hamas frees some of the hostages who were taken from Israel on October 7th. And while Israel releases some Palestinian prisoners who have been held for alleged crimes like stone throwing. Well, in the last few days, Hamas released a total of 58 hostages, including an American-Israeli girl who is just four years old and other young children. Most of them are now in the hospital but are expected to survive. Still, many are finding out that their families were killed and homes destroyed the day they were taken captive. Israel has offered them counseling and other support. On the other side, Israel has so far released 24 women and 15 teenagers from Israeli prisons and is set to release 39 more soon. It's not clear how much longer the ceasefire is going to last, since today is supposed to be the last day of it. But the Israeli government has said that the truce can be extended by an extra day for every 10 hostages freed. And negotiators are hoping for a multi-day extension. After that, Israeli officials have promised to quickly resume this war until Hamas has no more military or governing capabilities. But Israel also agreed to allow more humanitarian assistance to the Gaza Strip. That's been devastated by attacks from both the ground and the air. And the United Nations says it's been able to deliver supplies that have been out of reach for several weeks until now. Though the U.N. says it's still not enough to meet people's needs, especially once fighting gets going again. To be continued. Well, the war in Ukraine has been going on for more than a year and a half now. But it's still intensifying. Ukrainian officials say over the weekend, Russia launched its largest drone attack against Kyiv since the start of the invasion. And that was the fourth drone attack on Ukraine's capital just this month. So Ukraine seems to be retaliating on Russian soil. Russia says it took down at least two dozen Ukrainian drones and two missiles over Moscow and other Russian cities yesterday. Meanwhile, both sides are preparing for what could be a long winter. Both Russian and Ukrainian forces have been accused of striking the other's energy systems, leaving people without heat or power, something Russia did all last winter, crippling Ukraine's infrastructure. The former police officer who killed George Floyd in Minneapolis was seriously injured inside a federal prison. Another inmate stabbed Derek Chauvin. He had to be taken to the hospital but is expected to survive. So far, there's not a lot of information about the inmate behind the stabbing or what exactly led up to it. You'll remember Chauvin was sentenced to more than 20 years in prison for murdering George Floyd and violating his civil rights by kneeling on his neck for more than nine minutes back in 2020. Just last week, the U.S. Supreme Court rejected an appeal. It is starting to feel a lot like winter. The National Weather Service says most of the country is dealing with below average temperatures today, and there are expected to be some trouble spots. For example, the Great Lakes region, where some of the chilliest air of the season is causing lake effect snow. And the Plains states like Nebraska, Colorado, and Kansas that were slammed with several inches of snow already. Today, parts of the Midwest and Northeast could get up to three inches of snowfall an hour, power outages, and whiteout conditions. Winter storm warnings are in effect through tomorrow. Much more news is still ahead, but first, a break for our sponsor. If you want to hear, where'd you get this this holiday season? Uncommon Goods is your new go-to. You can get personal, unique, and high-quality gifts all in one place with Uncommon Goods. Because who has time to be running all over town to find the perfect gifts? Not me. And yet no one wants to just give everyone gift cards that will be forgotten about. 
Instead, Uncommon Goods has something remarkable and unique for everyone on your list, whether you're shopping for a secret Santa or your entire family. Even before they became one of our sponsors, I've gone to Uncommon Goods anytime I wanted a thoughtful gift for someone without needing to spend a lot of time. Just going to the website always makes me smile and gives me the best ideas. And get this, with every purchase you make at Uncommon Goods, they give back $1 to a nonprofit partner of your choice. They've donated more than $2.5 million to date. To get 15% off your next gift, go to uncommongoods.com slash newsworthy. That's uncommongoods.com slash newsworthy for 15% off. Don't miss out on this limited time offer, Uncommon Goods. We are all out of the ordinary. Now back to the news. It seems most Americans were able to get back home after this Thanksgiving holiday without too many disruptions. Yesterday was expected to be the biggest air travel day in U.S. history, made even more difficult by snow and rain in several states. But each day of travel saw no major disruptions and fewer flight cancellations than usual. Much better than last year's holiday season meltdown when flight cancellations and delays left thousands of passengers stranded. By the way, this Thanksgiving weekend was especially encouraging, considering there are many more busy travel days ahead. Airports expect this whole winter travel season to be record-breaking. Well, there are now some new concerns over U.S. border crossings ever since an incident last week. It happened at the Rainbow Bridge that links the U.S. and Canada in Niagara Falls. A car raced through an intersection, hopped a median, flew through the air, and slammed into a Customs and Border Protection booth. It then exploded and burst into flames. The couple inside the car died, and one Border Patrol agent was hurt. The crash prompted the Rainbow Bridge and three other bridges to close on a busy travel day while federal officials swarmed the area. Since then, the FBI and local agencies have ruled out the possibility of the crash being a terrorist attack. But some national security experts say it's still concerning that a car was able to reach such speeds so close to a border security checkpoint, since there are usually security measures to slow vehicles down. The Niagara Falls Police Department is now taking over the investigation. At-home tests to fight the growing epidemic of sexually transmitted infections, or STIs, are causing a public health controversy. For the first time, the FDA approved an at-home test for chlamydia and gonorrhea. It's called the Simple 2 test. It lets people collect samples at home and send them in instead of going to the doctor's office. And some public health officials say it's needed. Diagnoses of these types of STIs have soared in the past two decades. And they say this approval could help legitimize home STI testing, ensuring they're accurate, making it easier to get insurance coverage, and ultimately expanding their use. But some others are worried about a related FDA policy that they say could backfire. The FDA has proposed requiring similar approvals for all at-home testing to help make sure they're safe and effective and don't make false promises. But a group of LGBTQ sexual health advocates worry the cost of meeting the FDA's demand could force some STI test makers to shut down, and the price of home tests could go up. There's also concern the tests don't cover syphilis, another STI seeing an increase in diagnoses. Before this, HIV was the only other STI to have an FDA-approved at-home test. Authorities in Brazil are now investigating a Taylor Swift concert that went terribly wrong. Fans say they were not allowed to bring in water bottles to the Rio de Janeiro show, even though the heat index topped 138 degrees that day. They could apparently pay $2 for a small cup of water, but even then, some found themselves stuck in crowds too dense for vendors to reach them. During the show, the crowd chanted for water and held up signs asking Taylor Swift for help. At one point, she paused the show and asked staff to help. But even then, it was too late for a lot of people. Many of her fans got sick, more than a 1,000 passed out, and sadly, one 23-year-old woman died. So late last week, police launched an investigation into the Brazilian company that organized the show. It could end up facing up to $2.6 million in fines. Meanwhile, Taylor Swift's Eras tour has continued, and at her next show in Rio, fans got more access to water and there was more of a medical presence on hand. There was a surprising frontrunner at movie theaters over the holiday weekend. Studio estimates show action thriller The Hunger Games, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, carried its momentum into a second week, beating historical drama Napoleon. Disney's animated musical fantasy Wish had been expected to win the holiday box office, but instead it came in third, so it's widely considered a disappointment. Wish did not even come close to reaching the success of Disney's other animated films like Encanto, Frozen 2, and Coco that were released during previous Thanksgiving weekends. As for the Hunger Games prequel, it has now grossed nearly $100 million in the U.S. in total and double that amount overseas. 
Overall, U.S. and Canada ticket sales went up dramatically during the five-day holiday weekend compared to the last few years, even if they haven't quite reached pre-pandemic levels. That's it for the main news, so now it's time for Money Monday, when we talk about one interesting money-related news story. But first, support for today's episode comes from CastleFlex. I'm sure you've heard of the benefits of stretching, so I'm here to tell you about a device that I've found makes my stretching more effective and its benefits even more pronounced. Even after the first time I used the CastleFlex, I could tell a difference. And the more I use it, the better my body feels. Think of this device as WD-40 for achy bones and tight muscles. And really, using the CastleFlex before you get hurt or deal with issues is probably even better. Plus, it's the same price as just one or two massages or chiro sessions, and yet it can be used daily for years. They even have a two-week money-back guarantee. And now we have a code for our community to get a discount, so take advantage by going to castleflex.com, that's castle, like where a king lives, and flex, but with two X's, And be sure to use our code NEWS10 for 10% off. Again, get 10% off with the code NEWS10 at castleflex.com. Or if you buy today, it looks like they're having a Cyber Monday deal to buy two and get 20% off. Okay, now back to Money Monday. Holiday shoppers broke records this Black Friday. Several companies that track these kinds of things say Americans spent more, both in-store and online, as compared to last year. Overall, Adobe Analytics says stores brought in a record $9.8 billion in Black Friday sales, which is up 7.5% from last year. Another thing Adobe noted, most shoppers did their browsing and buying on their phones. And it expects that by the time the holiday shopping season is over, there will end up being more purchases made through smartphones than desktops for the very first time. But we'll see what happens today. Adobe also predicts Cyber Monday will be the biggest retail event of the year. It's expected to bring in a lot more discounts and a record $12 billion in sales. But you might want to leave a little extra money in your bank account, because remember, tomorrow is Giving Tuesday, a perfect time to give to meaningful causes or people who need a little extra help this holiday season. In fact, the Salvation Army has already brought out their iconic red kettles and ringing bells, but there are plenty of other ways to give back too, with donations, volunteering, or just general kindness. All right, thank you so much for listening today and every day. And a quick note that you can still get 40% off all Newsworthy merch today for Cyber Monday. Go to thenewsworthy.com slash merch to check out all the options and designs from shirts and hoodies to mugs, totes, cell phone cases, and more. And if you still want to get in on the idea of Small Business Saturday from over the weekend, we would love for you to join our insider community. Get ad-free episodes, occasional bonus episodes, and you'll be supporting our small independent team of journalists. Simply go to thenewsworthy.com slash insider for a seven-day free trial. And thank you, as always, to all of our current Newsworthy insiders. We appreciate you and your support. All right, we'll be back with more news to know tomorrow. For now, have a great day. 